tweeted me back. So, oh, good. Good guy. Why are people talking about Pete Rose right now? What happened? I'm not sure. Something happened with Pete Rose this morning, and they're all talking about Pete going in the Hall of Fame, whether he should or where he, whether he shouldn't. And uh, by the way, Clark, could you? They're asking where I watched the Montreal Vegas game yesterday. Wayne and Victoria writes in and says, where was it? It looks like you're in a barn. No, it was Todd in Winnipeg. Todd in Winnipeg says, that was in my brother's riding arena where they, uh, they do uh, rodeo in there. That's my brother in the foreground to the left. That's my brother, my oldest brother. My other brother's to the right. My uncle Gary's to the left. That blonde mane at the very bottom of the photo, that's my niece's boyfriend, <laughs> Tate. So it was a family affair. And people are bullying me that we were watching it on an iPad in that riding arena. And I'm like, listen, this is the way that I was raised. How many times do I need to say it? What you want and what you need are two different things. We were literally just happy to get the game. Oh, you just listen. Yeah. It was on a farm, people. (laughs) It's not exactly the strongest signal (laughs) out there. I know. So we were just happy to get the game. We'd have watched it on this. Everybody... Turn off your data. (laughs) We need to concentrate the efforts of the tower. It was a team effort. Yeah, good. Oh, great idea from Pinks. One of our P1 says I should mount this on the grill of Big Bird. Ooh. My Jeep. Can you imagine? I actually wanted to put some bull horns on the front, like Boss Hog's car. I was just going to say, this is the new version of Boss Hog's hood ornament. That's what I would have preferred to put on there. But, again, why are we talking about Pete Rose today? All of a sudden, the comments have gone crazy on Pete Rose. Anyways, I didn't know if you were going to come back out here or not. Okay. So I got, well, I got some, some texts ready here. Great. Uh, from Allie. She says, morning RP show from downtown Edmonton. Great OT win by the Vegas Golden Knights. Looking forward to our order arriving so I can wear the United shirt next game. Can you please say happy birthday to Kevin? So when we watch the show recorded from Game Plus tonight, he'll see it. If you, can not, if you cannot, no worries at all. Thanks in advance. Well, Allie, of course I'm going to do it. You want us to say happy birthday to anybody? Send us a note. Come on down. I'll do it. Oh, yeah. Why the hell not? What else yeah. we got to do? Jim Wagner. Morning, RP Nation. Flower power. Absolutely. Enjoy the day, all. You get the argument, Darren, as to why you would start Robin Leonard. Mm-hmm. I get it. I mean, you say you go, you want to go with a hot goalie. And, but I think Marc-Andre Fleury had to pay a little bit of a penance there. I love him. I love him. But I couldn't look at him after game three. I was so oh, upset. I know. It's time to go back. He is still the backbone of the team. However, it's a different team in front of Leonard as it is Fleury. But they're still a good team. They just play differently. Yeah, when I looked at that game, Robin Leonard, I mean, he was great, but he didn't have to make too many phenomenal saves. He made, you know, three or four really good saves in that hockey game, and, and he was good, but the group in front of him was really dialed in defensively, even though the shot count got up a little bit. A lot of that was from the outside. Um, you know, he, was, he was better, but they talked about that mistake that Fleury made when the puck came off the boards right off the end of his stick and the tying goal for Anderson there, which was really tough to watch, no matter who you were cheering for. They said that might have been a sign of fatigue, right? A Come sign on. of fatigue. Not so that's why it. So, but that's why you make the change. And if it's to give him a, a night off and give him a rest and refocus him, I'm here for it. That's why I say go back to Flurry in game five because Leonard comes in here with the plan. It's like, look, at, we need to give him a break, give him a night off, get everybody refocused. Great. You do that, you go back to Fleury in Game 5 and stay on the plan and know that you've got some room for error and you've got Leonard waiting and he's ready to go. I think you've got a good tandem. I think it's a good spot. Well, that's what they hope, and it's win-win. Um, they're both good goalies. Did you see Fleury playing the puck in practice the next day? It wasn't funny. He thought it was funny. He played it around the board. I know he did. He, he waved at the crowd. You weren't and laughing. The no, no. <laughs> it's the Stanley Cup. By the way, from the 204, anonymous texter writes in, because we had Greg Zahn last hour from Cleveland, and it writes, Cleveland, all caps, just happened to watch Major League last night. Wild thing. How about <laughs> that? A, how about that? 
Very, not an underrated show, Major League, but in the pantheon of sports films, it doesn't get its due. It doesn't. No. Hots for bots. Oh, and he puts it in the locker and they're Hots praying keep around. It. Joe Boo. Yeah. Wayne and Victoria. I have to admit, Rod, that as a young Riders fan, I used to blame the refs for rider losses. I guess I finally matured enough to realize that the refs are doing the best they can and are human, so mistakes are made. Uh, I was only joking that referees are human because I don't think they are human. And I was also joking saying we're not going to bitch about the officiating because it all went Vegas' way last night. And the game before that. Wait a minute. What am I? Because you know it's going to swing back. I shouldn't be is. sitting here gloating. It doesn't really matter. They're 0 for 26 from the power play. I uh, know, but that's because of Carey Price going into God mode. That is because of Carey Price, absolutely. So Montreal's overcome that stuff. Jeff in Winnipeg says, not sure if it's a rumor, but Kelly McCrimmon may have tested positive for COVID-19. You get your news a little slow out there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I came, came across on my notifications yesterday. Yesterday. In the barn! <laughs> I had enough of a cell signal to get that. Um, Kent Ridley, watching in Nashville, says, uh, sorry, Rod, you can have the audio. The chat belongs to us. They're all sitting over there in the chat section of this talking about Pete Rose, and I have no idea why. Can somebody tell me if the Pete Rose Sports Bar in Vegas is still open? You wouldn't probably know that. I is anybody know. watching in Vegas right now? I wouldn't. It's a very nice sports bar in the south end of the Strip. Pete Rose's. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't own it, but his name's on it. Probably gets a nice check. Uh, Whose bar did we go into? Is it in Houston? Is it Craig Biggio's bar? Uh, to watch I wasn't the ball with you. game? I wasn't with you. You might not have been with us that night. Remember, I was down for the count. Remember? Yes. With complications. <laughs> you and me both. My complications were a little, They're different, a little different. A little different than yours. Uh, from DG in Saskatoon, writing in on the Prairie Mobile text line, says, uh, Morning, guys. Unfortunately, I missed hour one of the show. It took that long for me to work my way through all of the videos on YouTube of sucker punches by Shea Weber. Why is the Canadian media only talking about Braden McNabb's punch and not Weber's? One of those two has been doing it for 15 years in the NHL and never gets talked about. Go Knights! I feel like we've started something. We have. DG in Saskatoon. And it reminds me, rodpetersonshop.com. There's still United shirts left. rodpetersonshop.com. Sell them like hotcakes. Sell them like hotcakes. Everybody is going to be wearing them, including us. I'm waiting for ours to show up. Yeah. Did you order me an XL? Oh, yeah. Here's the thing about Shea Weber. He got ran from behind by Nozick. So you got to kind of let Shea Weber off the hook for that. But if you watch the highlights or on SportsCenter, like the coverage has just been magnifique on SportsCenter of this, this series in particular. They're not even talking about the Islanders and the Lightning. I know. You notice that? Yeah. So they put a highlight of all the missed calls together. It's like... Two minutes long, just from game four. And so Nozick runs Weber hard from behind. This is my team, right? So I'm thinking, if I'm thinking this is wrong, what are Habs fans thinking? And, but, but why would the NHL not want Montreal in the Stanley Cup? This is not a conspiracy. But you know, the uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Oh, yeah. That's what worries me. Like, are they going to come around and screw Vegas now in the next two? That they, wouldn't be good. They might. And I think, you know, as a business and marketing guy and what would be great for the league, and I'm sure this is in the NHL head office. I mean, they're smart in the office. We might not think so, and you might want to, you know, complain I think about they're Gary very Bettman, smart. but I think they're yeah. very smart. Um, I think Montreal, New York would be just a delicious matchup. I know... You know, we talk about if that's the series, ratings are going to go in the toilet because they play both play a boring brand of hockey, but they both were great. They both have not been great lately. And you got two of the biggest markets, one of the biggest Canadian markets in Montreal yeah. and all-time great hockey fan bases. And you've got a really big market in New York, even if the Islanders are number two to the Rangers. 
that's just really juicy. You got Canada versus the U.S. You got these teams that were really good in the 70s and 80s. It's good. I think it would be fun. <sighs> Tampa just won. That market's already happy. Vegas is new, and they've got a rabid fan base, and they've had a ton of success. Do you understand? 20 years in the Canadian Football League, 17 years in the Western Hockey League, and time with Canada's World Junior Team, and I was the guy that thought there was conspiracies all the time. You know this. That was my thing. It's taken me three seasons out of the CFL to get over the fact that, no, there's no conspiracies, Rod. That's just you. And now you're all telling me that there's conspiracies. Are you saying that I was right the whole time? And the reason I say that is Andrew Stute, big Montreal fan, his avatar is Montreal Canadians. He says, Rod, NBC and ratings? Brady, you know Brady wasn't going to be silent for long. From Saskatoon, he writes in, USA makes them more money. It's quite simple, Rod. So am I supposed to troll these people the way I got trolled when I said there was a conspiracy? Do you remember the 2017 East Final when Kevin Glenn, like, literally was decapitated by the Toronto Argonauts? No flag, whatever. We, I think I grabbed my phone and tweeted immediately, clearly the CFL wants the Argos in the Grey Cup. How do you think that went over? Oh, I know. Like a fart in church. Not a joke. <laughs> Why am I getting wound up right now? Because uh, now I'm not sure either. <laughs> We've talked ourselves. I've talked myself. Under the ledge. Exactly. You know, well, maybe it would be great. But no, I, I don't think so. You don't think there's a conspiracy? No. Poll question. Is it a conspiracy or not? Maybe that'll be tomorrow's poll question. That's a great poll question. Leading into the game. Ah, and Andrew Stute says, and you were right, Rod. Wouldn't that be the all-time trick? The people that thought that I was wearing a tinfoil hat and I was that guy in uh, Better Call Saul. Uh, we've, you know seen, what I, we've seen enough movies and watched enough TV. You just... <laughs> Uh, to Kona Pal, he's mentioned the Riders' 13th man. Do you think somebody said, and you're going to go on the field at the end of the... I don't want, I don't want to go on the field. I want to win the... No, you're going on the field. That was just the brain cramp of all time. Now I'm starting to think that it wasn't. <laughs> I watched too much TV. <laughs> Clearly. Mm. Well, that was... I don't know. Do you know the, the hate that I got from people across the CFL? Rod, he's crazy. He's a conspiracy theory guy. Then he turns out he was right all along. By the way, breaking news today, and it's big news in CFL circles, and that is that Chad Jeter, defensive lineman for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, announced his retirement today to join the United States Air Force. And I'm so proud of him. This will be his career, hopefully, for a good 30 years. But I'm also incredibly sad for him because he wanted this so bad. I mean, COVID takes another one. I bought his bunny hug. Maybe I'll wear it tomorrow in his honor. That reach one, teach one, Black Lives Matter. I ordered that for Chad. I did not buy the steak knives that he was selling because I have enough. But that's what this guy's been trying to do in the pandemic just to pay his damn bills. Now he retires today to go to the Air Force. We still don't have an official announcement on Justin Medlock retiring in Winnipeg. So that's, you know, things aren't entirely great in the Canadian Football League right now, but they're playing. We were talking about this earlier that it's so quiet. Why is it so quiet? Because things aren't always great. We'll take a timeout and be back with Rich Sutter. This uh, warm, this is not the warm up, this is the second half kickoff. It's brought to you by the Four Season Sports Palace, your home for the National Hockey League and the Seattle Kraken Fan Club. We'll be right back. You're watching on Game Plus TV, Utah, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Stars, you're dispatched to a scene call. Patient has multiple traumatic injuries. This is why I back the Stars Lottery. Stars, we can accept the mission. This is why I'm all in. 
The prizes are great. The cause is critical. Stars Lottery. The lottery on a mission. Get your early bird tickets by June 24th for a chance to win a truck, trailer, toys, and cash. Buy yours at starslottery.ca or 1-844-STARS-SK. Capital is Regina's trusted GMC Buick Cadillac dealership. Whether you're on the market for a new or certified pre-owned vehicle, we got you covered. And when it's time for service work, you can trust our factory trained technicians who specialize in repairing any maker model. But don't take our word for it. Check out CapitalGMC.ca to see how we roll and to learn what other customers are saying about working with us. Your dealership experience should be fun, easy, and transparent. And that's exactly what you'll get when you choose Capital GMC, Regina's trusted GMC Buick Cadillac dealership. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Saskarish, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. In today's fast-paced world, we know you don't always have time to cook a nutritious meal. The Mad Greek and Moose Jaws got you covered with delicious takeout and delivery specials, even for large groups or occasions. Authentic Greek cuisine, pizza, ribs, and more. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Offering licensed dining, delivery, and their takeout window is open to get your Greek to go. For more information and to view the online menu, visit themadgreekeatery.com. back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's rock well we're in one <laughs> welcome back everybody and thanks for adding that music in is ryan here today i just Bryn's saw Bryn. doing it Bryn's doing the he's, thing i hear you he's doing tv jordan is still flying the millennium falcon okay jordan uh, has a sunburn he is the pilot. you saw that or not he's camping yeah was he camping this weekend something like that um Prairie Mobile text line. This is awesome. From the 716. Ask and you shall receive moose. Pete Rose's Bar and Grill opens at 11 a.m. today. Amazing food on the Vegas Strip, south end of the boulevard. Says the ribs are better than Montana's what? in Canada. Yay. He says, Rod, you call it as it is. You and moose are bigger talents, more engaged audience. No wonder people hang on your every word. That's from the 716. Didn't leave a name. Clearly a very smart person. I'll save that. Okay. Yes. Uh, support for the Rod Peterson Show is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. The 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping 
with the code RP20 at manscaped.com. Can I get a how about that? How about that? The Lawnmower 4.0. It's got a headlight on it. A headlight. You can shave yourself in the dark. Oh, here we go. Andrew Nielsen watching on Facebook says, Big win for the Vegas Golden Refs last night. That's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. I like the one where they had... I wish we'd stop talking about it is what I would. When McNabb scored and he's coming down the boards and he ran into the referee. <laughs> and he hugged him. Yeah. And they, did you see? And, there was, and it was two Vegas Golden Knights in the ref and the wide shot. And someone said, here's the photo of three Vegas Golden Knights celebrating the goal. And it was two guys in the ref. Oh, it was funny. I really enjoyed it. Kent Ridley, watch it in Smashville. He says, NBA ratings are bad whenever the Lakers, Celtics, or Bulls aren't involved. Even the Spurs run had bad ratings. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Which they won five titles, man. You probably, I don't know, would you ever have a reason to go to San Antonio? No. But if you do go to the AT&T Center, the the, the, um, tribute to those five championships, think about that. They're the Patriots of basketball. And nobody cares anymore. I know. Bad ratings? I don't know. I watch. Weren't you watching when the Spurs were winning at all? Oh, yeah. I'll watch for sure. And I'm going to watch the final four. Tony so Parker, Manu Ginobili. Yeah. But it's funny. You know, Tim Duncan. Um, they were good. Um, but that's, that's how we are in sports. Like, think of how right now the fan base thinks of the Detroit Red Wings. How do we think? Iconic. The, how do we think? Iconic. They went you know, was it 20 some seasons without missing the playoffs? Yeah, but they were junk before that. You're not old enough. Right. So I know them from, like, in my lifetime, I mean, at 87. So the 90s, the 2000s, they were the creme de la creme in the National Hockey League, and they won multiple Stanley Cups. And now all of a sudden, we just go back to thinking that they're this terrible organization and they don't know what they're doing. And that's only the really immediate short term, but that's how we view things. From Sean Walters on Facebook says, What do you guys think of Mackenzie Hughes play this weekend at the U.S. Open? There's a, been a few golf questions come in today. Here's my take on Mackenzie Hughes at the U.S. Open. First Canadian since Mike Weir to lead a major going into Sunday since 1999. John Rahm wasn't going to be denied. I talk often about hockey gods and football gods. There must be golf gods. There might be more golf gods. Oh, yeah. Mackenzie Hughes, what's he supposed to do? He's supposed to go into Carey Price mode? You weren't beating John Rahm. Did you see the putts he was making? Those were Tiger Woods-esque Putts. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't matter. I think Mackenzie Hughes shot a 77 on Sunday. He went back to being Mackenzie Hughes. Sometimes midnight strikes and your chariot turns into a pumpkin. Your carriage. That's what happened to Mackenzie Hughes. But you know what? Go get him next time. John Rahm, the gods owed him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. How can you take anything away from what John Rahm did? So it's not... Yes, Mackenzie Hughes blew up with a 77. What more do you want me to say? John Rahm wasn't going to be beaten. DeChambeau was pretty good uh, this he, weekend. He too. was good. To, he had himself in contention right down to the end and then fell off as well. It, it was, like you said, the golf gods kind of parted those seas for yes. John Rahm, and he wasn't going to be denied. Who was it that says here, this is funny, Adam Schultz, hitting the ball into a tree will rattle anyone. You... When something happens that you can't explain, that's God. You understand that. Maybe not the big God, but it's golf gods. Did you see him shoot it into the parking lot? It bounced and went into the tree. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> like, yeah. How do you explain that? Play it where it lies. It's interesting how these guys would rather lose an appendage than take a drop. Oh, I know. Well, that... <laughs> They know when it comes right down to the short strokes, it's uh, every shot matters. You know what? I'm not taking a penalty. If I can climb the tree and hit it out the top of the tree, I'm going to do that. And good on you if you can do it. I mean, I, when, I'm, you know, when I'm playing golf on Saturday, it's like I'm not playing it from the tall grass, let alone the tree. So you know what I'm saying then. Yeah. Um, here's a good one. Are Vegas fans so annoying? Question of the day. 
Brady, just because your Habs lost, don't go away mad. Just go away. We'll see you for game five tomorrow, which the poll question today, to which he's referring somewhat for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center is, who should the Golden Knights start in goal in game five? Marc-Andre Fleury or Robin Leonard? My vote's for the flower. Flower power. 55% on Twitter says the flower. 45% say the panda. What are they saying on Facebook, Moose? Yeah, pretty much the same. 52% saying flurry, and that's my vote too. Mark andre Is it a win-win? It's a win-win. I think so. Yeah. This guy wrote in earlier. Where did it go? Funny how we're only just talking about one series. Uh, where'd he go? Toski, Juan, Gus. It's like Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. Rod, who was the key for the Isles and the Lightning tonight? Also a dark horse player for either team. What are you betting on this? You want some betting advice? Guys really like the first goal bet, say. I, all, I almost always vote for Riley Smith to score first for Vegas. And he almost never does. I know. I just love him so darn much. Um, it's funny. The goalies, the goalies tonight. Semyon Varlamov and Andre Vasilevsky. That, that's the key right there. And then my boy, Ebbs. Where's Matt yes. Barzell at? He's, he's there doing oh, yeah. things, but now I want to see, get him on the scoreboard. I think he needs, to, he needs to step up and start to take over the games the way Braden Point has it, it, with Tampa uh, and start to you know, get over that hump. You know, he's, he's right there. He's not good. He's great, but he's not elite, right? Barzell. He needs to climb that ladder and become elite, and he can do that in this series. I'm looking at Barzell. I'm not sure he's an under the radar dark horse. But he's kind not. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't answer no. your question. He's not under no. the radar. But he's a guy we haven't thought of a lot in this series because he hasn't done a lot, I mean, on the scoreboard and a lot of scoring. So uh, that same Sean Walters says, did Rod just make a Motley Crew reference? Probably. But to what are you referring? Did I say kickstart my heart? Did I say girls, girls, girls? Did I say same old situation? Like, I, there's a... Wait a minute, that's poison. There's a very good chance that I'm doing an 80s rock reference, but I don't remember what I said. Jack in Alberta. Vegas in six. Then on to capture the 21 Stanley Cup. Whew. This feels good when, you, when it hits your lips. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, we're going to... Okay. Just a quick one. And uh, they tell me Rich is ready. So the guys in Toronto, I guess they know. You probably told them. Bob in Grand Prairie, Alberta says, I'm not worried about the refs. The Habs outplayed them again, and they'll take the series on defense and penalty killing, which always wins championships. That's from Bob. Uh, Hang on a sec. I'll read the rest later. Richie, we're coming to you. Think about this in the break. Does the NHL want Vegas to win? Because that's what all the Montreal fans are saying today. So we'll kick that around. We'll be back in a moment. Uh, You are watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network across all 10 provinces and 31 states. Live on YouTube and Facebook and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Ultimate Fan Zone, taking our show on the road coast to coast. Shop online, ultimatefanzone.ca. Slick, user-friendly, we built this site for the diehard sports fans. Jerseys, hats, team apparel, offering officially licensed fan gear from the best lines in sports. Nike, New Era, Adidas, Fanatics, game day ready to your door. Now, just a click away, ultimatefanzone.ca. Or check us out on Facebook and Instagram, UFZ Downtown Moose Jaw, home of everything authentic. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. 
Capital is Regina's trusted Ford Lincoln dealership. Whether you're on the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle, we got you covered. And when it's time for service work, you can trust our factory trained technicians who specialize in repairing any maker model. But don't take our word for it. Check out CapitalFordLincoln.com to see how we roll and to learn about what other customers are saying about working with us. Your dealership experience should be fun, easy, and transparent. And that's what you get when you choose Capital Ford Lincoln, Regina's trusted Ford Lincoln dealership. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we were on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back, everybody. I, I, I can't with these headphones, man. We got to get I this. I know, I know, I know. 510 episodes today. First, and the cord calved. I know, but this is how we roll around here. I want you to upgrade the golf ball box, the headphones, all these things. Yeah, it's time for an upgrade. The poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Who should the Golden Knights start in Game 5? Marc-Andre Fleury or Robin Leonard? It's a hot topic. 54% of you on Twitter saying the flower. And on Facebook, 50, what, 3% saying the flower. And then the rest of you are saying that the NHL wants Vegas to win. Hence the officiating. So there's a couple topics with Rich Sutter that we could probably last 10 minutes with as we head out to gorgeous Lethbridge, Alberta. How you doing, Richie? I'm great. How are you? Good. What's shaking today? I'm just wondering that guy in the white coat there. Did you have to con him to wear that Las Vegas t-shirt or what? It's not. Open it's, it. It's not. It's, a, <laughs> it's actually a basketball shirt, Rich. It's. It does say Golden Ticket Camp. This is yeah, a gift. It looks like Vegas, oh, okay. but it's not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Check but this hey, out. We do have gifts. I got this. Iron Works sent by his brother made me this. A laser. Things like 50 yeah, pounds, that's man. That's cool. Yeah, that's going to go in the lawn or something. So, yeah, that's d- awesome. Does the NHL need want to bury it in about five days, Rod? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Oh, I was a little worried going into. <laughs> I was a little worried going into Game Four. What do you think about this series? Well, well they got a little lucky last night. Um, unlucky Game Three, and and probably more lucky last night, where I felt that Montreal was much better um, compared to what. It was complete opposite in game three where Vegas was much better. Um, you know, yeah, so I, I still think it's a toss-up. I, I think that it's wide open. I think Montreal, is. it looked like they were gaining some co- traction last night. looks like they were gaining some confidence in terms of their ability of maybe how they can figure Vegas out. But on the other hand, now Vegas has got, you know, a day to, uh, you know, 
kind of get themselves figured out because I think for the first time in the series that they were all played uh, and uh, came away with a win. So I still think it's anybody's game. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, listen, you've been in these wars. What? what how do you feel when you're out <laughs> shooting the opponent 22-5 to five after the first period and you're down one nothing or 2 nothing? And that was with the flower and goal. That's disheartening. That was game three. I think the biggest thing is you got to take away two things from it. Um, I guess from a fan standpoint is disregard the shots. Uh, Carey Price was solid, but I didn't think he had to be spectacular. Um, Vegas was throwing everything at the net from all over the place. So as long as Carey Price is going to see it nine times out of 10, he's going to stop it. Uh, so, you know, um, just last, you know, you, you look at those things and, and and then you look at last night how Robin Lehner played. Uh, I think that the only mistakes that Montreal made in the game is that they didn't force the issue a little bit earlier in the game to, uh, to get more inside traffic, uh, get more inside looks. I mean, inside from the slot area. Uh, probably nowhere near as much as they probably should have or wanted to. And it allowed Laner to settle into his game because let's not forget his last start was three weeks ago and he was awful. And even though the team in front wasn't great, he wasn't very good himself in the pacing they got in Colorado. But um, I think what happened last night, he was allowed to settle in and get his mojo going a little bit. And uh, now begs the question that, uh, okay, who starts tomorrow? Uh, that was my next question for you. So my votes, Flower, what's yours? Well, I mean, Peter DeBoer surprised us all um, by going the other way last night, right? And and I think that you can say what you want to say about Marc-Andre Fleury, but um, they didn't lose game three because of what Marc-Andre Fleury didn't do. Um uh, maybe he needed it. Maybe he needed a rest. And the thing is that the best thing you see about Mark Andre Fleury is, was who is he was probably more excited than anybody else when they won the game last night. Quite be quite frank about it. So, I, I I think it's a toss up. I really don't think you can go wrong at this time of the year. Vegas has gotten where they are uh, three times in the last four years because of good goaltending from whoever was in net. So I think that. It, I don't think it's going to matter who starts tomorrow night. Um, probably more personally, I'd love to see Flower in there. Um, but I'm not Pete DeBoer making that decision. Yeah, well, I'm glad I don't have to make the decision. But, Rich, look, long-suffering Golden Knights fan here. We've never won a cup. So I believe Flurry did cost him game three. I'm so- And I love the guy. I was going to bed. It was 2-1 with a minute to go, Rich. So I didn't have a problem with the goalie change. I didn't. Well, you've never won the cup. It's only been four years, Rod. So. <laughs> That's my point. That's my point. What about the officiating, Rich? Uh, I, I, you know, I look, it's a difficult job, and these guys do a good job, but I, I, I'm a little bit mystified by the guys that are repping at this time of the year. Um, I get it. you got to give younger guys an opportunity that they've earned their stripes to get to where they are this deep into the playoffs rod uh i'm just a little bit mystified that there still is inconsistencies in the plays or the non-calls or the calls um and i don't think there's an edge that goes either way quite frankly um but i think at the end of the day uh if you set the primers early in the game and how these guys are going to play and how they want to physical at this time of the year how physical they want to be the promises are set, and and the teams know with communication through the officials about okay how far you can carry some things. Um, that's all you can do, and I, I just like to see a bit more inconsistency in it. Um, again, the best part I like is when there are scrums. Um, you're seeing you're seeing very little being taken out of them in terms of a penalty to either side or one side, and that's how it needs to be. Uh, you know. It gets frustrating when you become a fan of these games. Uh, even in junior, when you see the scrums and the officials think you got to send six guys to the filming box because they think they're doing their jobs. Uh, 
I think what these guys have learned is that, look, you set the parameters, let them figure it out, let them let the players decide a little bit more about how the games are going to be decided. And uh, just a little more consistency would help, but I think at the end of the day, the players know it's a difficult job. A the Islanders Tampa series isn't getting a lot of pub in this country. Have you noticed? I know you're watching every minute of it. Uh, surprised it's two two at all? I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, it could it could easily be three one either way. Again, it comes down to uh, a couple of players making plays. Uh, obviously, Tampa's got a couple more game breakers and playmakers than who the Islanders have or what the Islanders have. But at the end of the day, Barry Trotz and Lane Lambert have done a hell of a job. Uh, They're four deep. I laughed. Someone needs to correct Elliot Friedman um, that uh, you need to stop calling the Zizekas line the energy line. He's the only guy in the world I've ever heard call him that. I think he has the last two games. Uh, They are clearly the identity line. (laughs) <laughs> and have been for th- two or three years around the NHL. Uh, I guess Elliot likes to do things his way, though. So um, uh, I just think at the end of the day, fourth lines uh, have been huge on both sides. And sure, Tampa's hasn't scored, but you don't win cups. You don't get deep in the plus without an identity in your in your group. Uh, I love what this Ezekiel line has brought to the table on a daily basis for this team and how they've been able to contribute in the playoffs. So uh, that's what I think is going to be a deciding factor and all said and done. If the honors can get more, uh, something more out of the, these guys in terms of on the score sheet, um, they've got themselves a real good chance to still win it. Hey, uh, viewers asking who wins tonight, Islanders or Tampa. Well, I'm pulling for Tampa. So, uh, or sorry, I'm pulling for New York. So I'll take the Islanders. But Rod Brindamore wins coach of the year. And uh, up for the GM of the year are Lamarillo and uh, Bergevin. Uh, your thoughts on those finalists and uh, Brindy winning it all for the coach award? Thrilled for Rod. Uh, when I was traded to St. Louis, it was Rod's first year, and he was my stallmate on to my left side. And uh, I was just so happy to have this kid on my lineup and playing every night and just knowing that his upside where he was going to get to just simply because his will and his character and his drive and his commitment um, and his team play was such a great uh, inspiration to your team, even when he was such a young age. And you just knew that Rod was going to be a real good player for a long time. And he's a player's player. And now he's a player's coach. Uh, his positivity, uh, if he knows he has to rattle some and he doesn't do it in front of the group, he does it the right way. He just does, he just pushes so many of the right buttons. I'm just so thrilled for him. Uh, his success, it, it hasn't changed him as a human being, and that's been the most important thing. And I, that's why the players love playing for him. Um, the right call to me, he was clearly the coach of the year this year. Awesome. Yeah, great guy. Notre Dame Hounds alum, of course. What do you got going on today? Working? Uh, I'm going to get home this afternoon, get some video work done, watch a few more uh, players from the last few nights, more one-on-one stuff. Uh, out at our golf center here in Lethbridge, we, I'm a partner with a, uh Evergreen Golf Center and Academy we have out here, which is a tremendous place. Um it uh, has served itself well during this last 16 months. We've been, we've been busy, thank God, uh, with the protocols and managing uh, things. So excited to just come out here two or three times, you know, a month, spend spend part of the day, just be around the people, uh, our employees more so than anything else, and uh, just see how busy it is. Uh, and maybe sneak in a a lesson or two from a golf pro we have out here that we have a number of them um, that do a very good job teaching the people here. So uh, might, some of them might teach me how to hit a ball better than the hell hell I'm hitting it right now. <laughs> well, sounds like a good day. I appreciate your fitness. Whoa! Sounds like a good day, Rich. Here you go. Appreciate your fitness in. Yeah, you guys listen. Take care. Um, enjoy your links out there where you seem to be playing a little bit. I'm going to envy up. Maybe one day I'll get out there and you can take me, Rod. We'll be here. Deer Valley it is. Let us know. Thanks, Rich. 
Okay, take care, guys. Appreciate you. Rich Sutter joining us from Lethbridge, Alberta. We'll take a timeout. Be back. we got a face-off coming up. What would you like us to face off mm-hmm. about? Do you have anything? I was going to say Mark andre Fleury because it's so close, Robin Leonard, but we're on the same page on that. Uh, conspiracy theories. Are they a thing? <laughs> we got I still f- think no. we got four minutes to come up with it. Okay. Heading into overtime right after this, you're watching the RP Show on Game Plus Television Network across all 10 provinces and 31 states. Live daily on YouTube and Facebook and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. In today's fast-paced world, we know you don't always have time to cook a nutritious meal. The Mad Greek and Moose Jaws got you covered with delicious takeout and delivery specials, even for large groups or occasions. Authentic Greek cuisine, pizza, ribs, and more. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Offering licensed dining, delivery, and their takeout window is open to get your Greek to go. For more information and to view the online menu, visit themadgreekeatery.com. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. And uh, the moose is loose as well. It's overtime. We got eight full minutes here for OT. How about that? How about that? (laughs) We're going to get into a face-off here shortly, but... Darren in Edmonton watching on Game Plus Television writes. He says, RP and Moose, I know you're both big football fans. 
What's the chances of August 27th doing a remote show from Edmonton? Have you both out for the Prairie Football Conference Edmonton Wildcats golf tourney fundraiser? Have RP speak at the dinner that night? Signed, Darren. Uh-huh. Over to you. Call me. We'll make it happen. There you go. No, Email me. DM him. DM me. That's the best. DM me. Have your people DM his people. And we'll do lunch. We'll do it. And get after it. Uh, John Burns on the Super Chat. He dropped five bucks. No, two dollars. Are we only worth two dollars? <clears throat> yeah. Do I need to hike my skirt up a little more? Get a little more out of you, John. He drops a toonie. He just wants a taste. <laughs> Do a face-off on the face-off movie sequel. Didn't watch it, so how about that? That's the one with Nicolas Cage, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I watched the first one, but not the second yeah, one. Yeah, I need to watch it. Actually, at the lake on Saturday, they had dodgeball on. and I, on the, That's an all-timer. Yeah, on the big screen. And I'm like, you know... I want to say they had this on the bus with the Pats for like 19 times. I never watched it. Really? Like I just, yeah. In, in and out. There's some pretty funny scenes in dodgeball. Oh, yeah. Like really funny scenes in dodgeball. What were you going to say? Cram it up your cram hole the floor. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a lot, so of, inappro- there's a so lot of inappropriate many. comments on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, the breaking news today. From the Canadian Football League, Saskatchewan Rough Riders defensive lineman Chad Jeter has retired to join the United States Air Force. So, mucho respect to Chad Jeter for doing that. Mucho disappointment for him having to retire due to COVID. I mean, when the United States Air Force calls, you answer. That's right. And James, oh, sorry, Justin Medlock retiring last week, the veteran kicker from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I think we're still waiting for an official announcement on that. But somebody had predicted, you wait, over the next month, there's going to be a lot of vets retire. And people are saying, well, why would they retire? They've waited 16 months. Life doesn't uh, slow down. Doesn't stop for anybody. So we're going to face off on this. What did I say we were going to face off on? Did you say something? Oh, I can come let's up do with that some. again. <laughs> we're yeah. going to face off on this. Conspiracy theories in sports. My mind's blown on this, by the way. You might have a chance of winning this one because I'm on the edge today. <laughs> it's brought to you by the Mad Greek and Moose Jaw and the Ultimate Fan Zone. Do leagues actually want certain teams to win? Anybody that's been known me for decades and listened and followed my career, I was the guy saying it's fixed. The league wants this. And for years... I was nailed to the cross. Rod, you're nuts. You're crazy. That doesn't happen. And now I get out of it for three years and people are like, no, 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 you were right. What? I put up with all that bunk and hate and I was right that it is fixed? We're talking about the National Hockey League wants the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup final over Montreal because of the U.S. television audience for real? I'm going to say it's not real. I'm going to because. Even though I really thought there was a conspiracy, I got it like whipped out of me so many times I didn't believe it. They were gaslighting me. <laughs> I was right all along and they told me I was wrong. Does the NHL want Vegas in over Montreal? I don't think so. They they might to really engage the US market, but they've already signed their deal, their television deal. So that's already cinched up. So improved, you know, U.S. television ratings aren't going to help you get a better deal now. But I've watched enough movies and TV shows to start to believe in the conspiracy. But I have to, like, it's going to be a draw here on the face-off because I have to agree. I, I, I just can't get that far over to think that there actually is conspiracy theories. I've been in, you know, referees' rooms. You know what? They think there's a conspiracy with us as broadcasters, that we want one win, team to win over the other. And we love good stories. So when one team's coming back from behind, yeah, I'm kind of pulling for them to come from behind. And if they tie the game, then I'm kind of pulling for the other guys because you're just pulling for a good story, right? I, think, I don't think officials are in the room being like, how can we screw them tonight? 
I just don't think that's happening, so I'd say no. He's got a story here, but first I'll just tell you that the face is brought to you by the Mad Greek and Moose Jaw. That patio is now open for licensed dining at the Mad Greek and Moose Jaw. Visit them today. And brought to you by Ultimate Fan Zone, who hosted a great Father's Day giveaway of all Blue Jays. Bo Bichette jersey, which goes to one of our lucky viewers, Nathan Clarehue. Shop online today at ultimatefanzone.ca. I can tell you it's your number one source for Vegas-born merchandise. I remember one night, you know that bar in Moose Jaw called the Crush Can? You ever been in there? I have. Great spot. And I'm having a couple of wobbly pops with some officials, and I said, hey, do you guys have it in for our GM? Linesman sucks back on his Pilsner, and he goes, no. <laughs> I'm not going to name him. And that time, let me say that again. Do you have it in for our general manager, you refs? No. So they're on the ice subconsciously trying to screw your team. I, like I've spent years thinking about this and examining it. <laughs> I know. And I flushed it from my mind because I was told I was crazy. And now it's coming back around and you got the officials saying, yep, we are biased or we don't like this coach. We don't like that player. Or we, like Chris in Toronto says, it's easy to referee from your sofa. We're not talking about the refs. We're talking about the direction from their bosses. Can it influence calls? I don't think we've, we're going to go off oh, the air with any sort of uh, I know. Why are we doing this answer to this. Less than 90 seconds to go. It's crazy. I don't think that's coming from the bosses. But there's no doubt that when you don't like somebody or they rub you the wrong way that you don't go out of your way to help them. Right. So you might not quite call it. Be like, no, I'm not right. calling that. It doesn't look like a penalty. Be better, you know, be tougher, take a hit. Right. And when somebody else is, you're a little more prone. Maybe I can see some of that coming through, but not an act of looking for something or saying, I'm not calling that because I don't want you to win. I think there's a little subconscious all the time in how we act. Yeah. But well, you know. We uh, got 40 seconds here. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says same, same how TSN and the CFL wanted the riders in the Grey Cup for viewership. Interesting, he says, wanted. They don't anymore. But I remember at a luncheon at Grey Cup, Mark Cohan, rider luncheon, he plopped the Grey Cup down. The commissioner of the league, he's like, I'm just so darn happy you guys are here at the Grey Cup because all the Grey Cups are better when Saskatchewan's in them. I'm like, Mark. You can't say that. You can't say it out loud. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong. There's a difference between wanting a teams in the Stanley Cup and the Grey Cup and taking action to make it happen. I think they they absolutely want. We want the CFL back. It's I'm better like, for our show. I'm like, you're the commissioner. Say whatever the hell you want, but I don't think you should be saying that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, Kenton, uh, Kenton Nashville, for the nice comments. Tomorrow, Michael Landsberg and VEASAN's Andy McNeil. See you at noon Eastern on Game Plus. Da -da 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 -da. 